Today, more and more people are switching from cars to small sport utility vehicles. The segment has grown tremendously in the past two years and will continue to grow, which creates a terrific opportunity to increase sales with the all-new Chevy Tracker. We're going to check out the small sport utility market, preview the all-new 99 Tracker, and we'll take a closer look at the many features that make it special. That's in this edition of Truck Track. Hi, I'm Callie Northhagen. Joining me today is Diane Romanelli of the Chevrolet Tracker brand team. Thank you, Diane, for being with us. Thank you. You know, the Tracker is all new for 99, but that was actually kind of surprising for me to hear considering it was almost done away with several years ago. Why did Chevy decide to make such a commitment to Tracker at this time? The small utility segment is one of the fastest growing segments in the industry. We saw it grow over 20% this past year, and we're expecting about 50% growth in the next two years. What we found is that a lot of the consumers that are new to our segment are coming from cars, and they're looking for the agile handling that they have liked from their cars, but also for the styling and the durability of an SUV. Is the new Tracker really that much different than the old one? Tracker is all new for 1999, and it's vastly improved. What we found is that people, um, as they learn about the Tracker, learn about it in, in a couple of stages. First, when they see the styling of the new vehicle, they re can really tell that the styling is much more modern and much more grown up. It fits very well into the Chevy lineup of SUVs. Next, when they get into the vehicle, they can feel that it's much more refined on the inside. It's much quieter. And as they're driving, they'll feel it uh, has a much more stable ride and it feels much more sturdy. Well, I understand several dealers had an opportunity to test drive this recently. Right. And actually, we captured some of their comments on videotape. Let's hear what they have to say. I've been working with the Tracker brand team now for the last few years. And I've gone to the clinic since this vehicle was first being built a few years ago. And the customers ask for high styling, and it's there. They ask for more room, and it's there. And they ask for a good value, and it's there. This new Tracker is really going to be a winner much better than his predecessor, a car I think that we can sell, a sport utility that I think we can sell. My first impression is that it can't be made by the same manufacturer, Chevrolet, that made our old tracker. It's a great vehicle. We had the opportunity to drive the RAV4 and, and the Honda CRV, and the tracker doesn't take a backseat to either one of those vehicles in any way. Good acceleration, better than the Toyota RAV4. It, uh, the ride to me felt very much like our S10 or our Blazer ride. Uh, it was very comfortable, but yet it still had a solid feel on the road. The Tracker now has a much more modern look as compared to the previous Tracker. It takes on the Chevrolet dominant styling feature as a part of our Chevrolet brand. Really sharp. I had not seen it before other than in pictures, but when I first walked out here and had them parked next to each other, I mean the styling was certainly equal to the styling on any of the competition that we had present here. Tracker has no resemblance at all to, the, to our previous trackers. It's an all-new vehicle. Uh, it's completely redesigned. The features are fabulous in the vehicle, and you have to drive the vehicle. You have to understand it. Once they come in and see this car and drive it, and uh, based upon the pricing information that we were given, I don't think there's going to be too much problem trying to sell this vehicle in the marketplace. The new tracker is so different from the old tracker that when we get the first one at the dealership, I'm going to insist that every salesperson take it for a ride. Wow, they love the new tracker. Maybe you can go through for us some of the elements that might be helpful to the salespeople when presenting the tracker. Sure. There are really four things to keep in mind. Agile handling, Chevrolet durability, comfort and convenience, and great value. Agile handling is something that we heard a lot about in the research that we did. Consumers want to be able to zip in and out of traffic and into tight parking spots, and the tracker has terrific agility. It really comes from the new 2-liter engine, which has 34% more horsepower than last year's. It also comes from the uh, power rack and pinion steering, 
the wider track, and the five-link rear suspension, which altogether create a great handling package. Chevrolet durability is, is the next point to keep in mind. Uh, the Tracker is based on the same ladder frame construction as all Chevy SUVs, and that really is a great selling point and a great differentiator between the Tracker and its competition. The other key durability feature is the truck-based four-wheel drive system with four-wheel low. It also includes shift-on-the-fly four-wheel drive that will let you shift from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive without stopping. And it's got eight inches of ground clearance, which will really come in handy in four-wheel drive situations. Comfort and convenience is one of the other great improvements on the new Tracker. Um, as soon as you get into the vehicle, you'll recognize it feels bigger and more refined. Uh, the seats were specially designed to be comfortable on long trips. There's cubby holes for all the different things you carry. There's more usable cargo space than last year. And in the four-door, there's enough room for three across seating in the rear. Also, in terms of convenience, there's a lot of features that you may not expect in a vehicle that's this affordable. For example, there's delayed entry lighting, battery rundown protection, and an extra power outlet for your cell phone. Um, and, the, and the last thing is, is value. Um, every Chevrolet obviously has great value, and uh, Tracker fits right in there as well. The um, uh, Tracker is much less than its competition, in, both in terms of base price and when comparably equipped. The two-door two-wheel drive begins at about $13,995, and the four-door four-wheel drive starts at $16,295, popularly equipped about $19,000. It's really a great value uh, for both the two-wheel drive versions and the four-wheel drive versions, especially versus the RAV4. It's just an outstanding value. Great. Well, you've covered it all. Thank you very much, Diane. Now, for a closer look at the all-new Tracker, let's go to Peter Toko. Thanks, Callie. You know, the moment you look at the new Trackers, you can see there's something different. Designers gave both the two and four-door models a more sporty and muscular look. They also want a Tracker to show its Chevy family heritage. The new Tracker is about two and a half inches wider and both models are longer than before. The added length and width provide more interior room and improve the ride. These larger Trackers are also easier to handle because they now come with standard power rack and pinion steering. The new system gives Tracker responsive handling solid on-center feel, and a tight turning diameter. Come on, I'll show you the engine. Now, under the hood, there's more power with the new 2-liter 127 horsepower engine. It delivers 32 more horsepower and 36 more foot-pounds of torque than the 1998 1.6-liter engine. The 2-liter engine is standard on the 4-door model and optional on the 2-door. Trackers with a 2-liter engine feature an anti-flex bar mounted to the front strut towers. The bar helps stiffen the body structure for a solid feeling when driving on or off-road. The ride is further enhanced with a new five-link rear suspension that adds stability over bumps, potholes, and rough roads. Back to you, Callie. One reason people buy a sport utility vehicle is for the ruggedness of a truck, even small SUVs like Tracker. A lot of competitors may look tough, but they are designed like a car. Toyota's RAV4 and Honda CRV offer good examples of what I mean. Both have unibody construction, a design used on many cars. For more on this and Tracker's durability, let's go back to Peter. Thanks, Callie. Well, here we are once again outside. Last year we were talking about what a mild winter we were having, and this year, forget about it. Winter's here in full force. I'm outside to talk about unibody construction. Now vehicles with unibody construction are all one piece, kind of like this egg. Now you can roll this egg on a smooth surface and not worry about cracking the shell. But what would happen on a bumpy surface? Well, we know what would happen. It would break. Unibody construction works for cars because they are designed for smooth roads. But you wouldn't take your car off-road. In fact, Here's a quote from the Honda CRV owner's manual. It says the CRV is primarily for use on pavement. Its higher ground clearance allows you to occasionally travel on unpaved roads. It is not designed for trailblazing, mountain climbing, or other challenging off-road activities. Well, <laughs> I tell you what, even driving around on paved roads in these conditions can seem like a trailblazing. Tracker is different. It's built like a Chevy truck with a full ladder type frame. 
Picture these as frame rails that run the length of tracker. The latter rungs are cross members connecting the rails, and the body is built upon this frame. Such a design adds reinforcement and resists twisting, which makes for a solid, stable ride on and off-road. Tracker also features a new four-wheel drive system. It's a true shift on the fly system with four high, four low, and automatic locking hubs. Some competitive systems do not allow the driver to have control of the four-wheel drive. Tracker gives drivers complete control. The floor-mounted shifter allows drivers to go in and out of four-wheel high at speeds of up to 60 miles per hour without stopping. People who like to go off the beaten path will also appreciate that Tracker has a four low gear. Shifting in the four low increases torque for getting out of rugged terrain, mud, or deep snow. Part of the new advertising campaign is the Where's the Tracker sweepstakes. It's all part of the largest integrated marketing launch ever for Tracker. The advertising utilizes a contest to provide interest and intrigue. There will be three sweepstakes held during the 1999 calendar year. Two different television commercials will show the tracker in a rugged historical location somewhere around the globe. Each commercial will contain clues to the location and viewers will be asked to guess where's the tracker. For each contest, clues also will appear in three print ads, direct mail and the internet. Responses can be made by writing in or visiting the tracker site on the World Wide Web. Everyone who correctly identifies the right location will be entered into a prize drawing to win a tracker. High on a rocky ridge in Bohemia stands an imposing castle surrounded by a labyrinth of streets. Luckily, there's the agile and durable all-new Chevy Tracker. If it can conquer the ragged cobbled hills of this medieval town, it can tackle any gravel road back home. If you know where the tracker is, you could win it. For more tracker information, or to enter, click here. The all-new Chevy Tracker. It gets around. Agility and durability are just part of the tracker story for 99. People are also going to be impressed by the new level of comfort and convenience features. Tracker's new seats are specially tuned to absorb road vibrations before they get to the driver and passengers. And that's just the beginning. The interior has been redesigned for both two and four door models to be both pleasurable and convenient. New delayed entry lighting keeps the lights on for about 15 seconds to help you settle in. A new instrument panel includes a gauge cluster with an electronically controlled speedometer, tachometer, cool and temperature gauge, fuel gauge, and dual triple odometer. Enhanced ergonomics also make it easier to find controls. For added convenience, there are storage pockets for maps, sunglasses, and drink containers. There are a few features that are distinctive to the two and four door models. With a two and a half inches added to the body width, the Tracker four door can now seat three people across the back seat. And because the four door body is four inches longer, there's more cargo length when the rear seat is up. Other convenience features include battery rundown protection, and a pollen filter included with air conditioning. Remote keyless entry is also available. The extra length on the two-door has been put to good use in a couple of ways. The cargo area can be equipped with an optional tracker trunk where you can stow and lock valuables with the top up or down. An additional three cubic feet of added cargo capacity behind the rear seat makes it possible to stow more cargo like these bags or a set of golf clubs. And because the two-door body is five inches longer, there's four more inches of rear leg room. Even the fuel tank has been made larger to hold nearly three additional gallons for the two-door. Back to you, Callie. One of the key features of the two-door tracker is the redesigned convertible top. Its tight-fitting design helps reduce vibration and wind noise. It's easy to operate and offers the option of opening and folding the top, removing only the rear section or both. Joining Peter for a demonstration on how the top works is Phil Carlisle of the Tracker brand team. They say the convertible top is easy to operate. Well, joining me for a demonstration of how the top works is Phil Carlisle of the Tracker brand team and Scott Taylor from the manufacturer. 
Phil, it's good to see you again. Welcome. Great to be back, Peter. Well, is the top really easier to operate? Yes, it is, and that's why we came here to uh, show you. Well, today. take me through the steps. Okay, Scott's going to get in, and he's going to take uh, undo the latches that are over the uh, driver and passenger uh, part of the vehicle. And at that point, he's going to fold back the top. This is the same way that you uh, folded the top on the one-piece uh, top that we had on uh, 1998 and earlier yes, models. Yes, I remember. And then uh, the other very important thing is to put the strap, this, uh, the secure down strap, mm -hmm. through the front of the roof bow, put tension on it, and put it back on the Velcro top. That keeps the top from fluttering in the wind when you're at highway speeds. Now, what happens if you don't fold this front top properly? It could catch a little bit of wind. It could flutter on the top. Plus, by doing it this way, you open up the most amount of space uh, over your head, so you Makes get the sense. best view. Now, what's he doing now? Okay, we're going to cycle the back part of this top. Uh, there are two snaps that uh, Scott's undoing right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he's going to take the tension off the uh, bow, both left and right side. And now the back is a little bit floppy, and it's easier to take the windows out. Uh, he'll start with taking the side windows out. Uh, that's we're something else when you're running around. If you don't want to take the whole top down, but you do want your windows out, you can just zip out the left and right window. Now, where would you put this side window once it's removed? You put them in the, the uh, cargo area. Uh, if you had the uh, tracker trunk, you'd want to take your uh, rear seat, fold it forward, and slide them in between the uh, tracker trunk and the seat, and then you can push, after you put the convertible back down, push that all back mm -hmm. together and it forms a nice, uh, it's a nice look over the uh, tracker trunk. I see. Do you have to remove this entire deck assembly? No, uh, it's uh, made to stay on uh, the vehicle at these two points on both sides of the vehicle here, and that's to keep the top from fluttering in the wind. I see. It's also uh, uh, meant to stay on the roof bow. You'll see snaps as the top comes down, uh, and the top is secured around the roof bow, and those snaps should, should remain on. Uh, you don't need to take that off. Nice. Everything folds down as one piece now. Right into the cargo right, area? Right into the cargo area. Well, that's convenient. That didn't really take too much time at all. Not at all. It's all in practice. Do it about three or four times, and you're set for life. Well, Scott sure made that look easy, Phil, but I have to ask you, is putting the top up more difficult? No, not at all. Uh, you just reverse the process. There are a couple of things, though, that we do want to point out to you. Um, on the uh, rear section, the main section here, there is a groove. That needs to be located with uh, the garnish molding on the top. Uh, there's a piece that slides into that, that cutout there. I'm going to hand this to Scott. He's going to put that up there. Now, why does that have to line up? Uh, that makes sure that the top is uh, located properly. Uh, it lets you put the side windows in easier. Uh, and the rear uh, window, and to make sure that all the air and water leaks, uh, or there will be no air and water leaks to the top. I see. Second thing I want to show you is uh, a couple of, couple of items on the windows on the side. You know, when um, Scott was putting this up, he had the tension off the uh, roof bow. That's the only way you can get the top up. It also makes the uh, insulation of the windows on the side a lot easier. The key things to note about this, uh, again, uh, this plastic piece has to be in the uh, right area of the, of the uh, channel or the garnish molding here, and that uh, the leading edge is down below the vehicle. And Scott's going to put that on right now. Uh, there are also Velcro pieces inside and outside, and we have to make sure that that's all flat inside uh, and put in properly. What that does is it uh, keeps the wind noise down and it also makes sure that the roof doesn't leak. Probably cuts down on drag as well, correct? That's correct. Now, is there anything that salespeople should know about this new convertible top? Yeah, uh, it's, very, it's very functional. The fact that you can cycle either the front or the back of the, of the uh, top independently now. So at high noon, instead of uh, having the sun beating down on your head, you can put the sunbonnet section up and lower just the back, get a lot of air through the vehicle. Uh, the other thing is the serviceability. The fact that the side windows and the rear window are independent pieces that are serviced through SPO. You can replace those independently now. You don't have to buy a whole new top. Do you think it's a good idea for the salespeople to perhaps practice this maneuver before customers yeah, I, come onto the lot? I would recommend that, that uh, they get comfortable with it because um, once you're comfortable cycling this top up and down is very easy. Uh, as you can see with Scott doing this, it, it, it works very fast and I think it could make, uh, it'll be a big impact on, on your sale of the vehicle. Well, thanks so much, Phil. Yeah. You too, Thank Scott. You. The new convertible top is a perfect example of all the thought that has gone into the all-new Tracker. When you add it all together, the agility, durability, comfort, and convenience, you have the value people are looking for in a small sport utility. Back to you, Callie. Thanks again, Phil. Thanks.
Chevy's website is always being updated to help you and your customers to find out what's going on at Chevy. The most recent update includes new pages with the latest information about features, specs, and more for the all-new Tracker. While you're checking out the new pages, be sure to look over the information on where's the Tracker sweepstakes. The Chevy Spot website includes a partnership section with information on Chevy's involvement in sports, outdoor activities, destinations, and more. There are other pages for customer sales incentives, dealership locations, and all the latest product information. You can access the Chevy Spot website at www.chevrolet.com. And that's all the news for this edition of Truck Track. For Peter and myself, thanks for watching. Goodbye for now.